All right, so for starters, you need your two pieces of trim that you can make your corner with. You need a pencil, you need your square, you need both pair of snips and some kind of pair of pliers. Flat bill, duck bills are best. In my case, I'm gonna use these. And you need at least three clamps for when you're doing base trim, which is what I'm showing you that we're doing here. So you're gonna need three clamps of any size and your screw gun and the appropriate screws for the trim. So your corner is made up of two pieces, one intersecting another, okay? Come this way, go that way. That being said, you're gonna have two different types of corners that you're gonna make. One for this side and one for this side. They're both different. They're going to look different from each other. So I'll walk you through the process of each one, starting with the first one. So the first corner we're gonna make is this one here on this side. The other one's gonna be on this side, okay? First corner, first of two. So the first thing we need to do is measure the distance between this edge and this edge, outside to outside, okay? And you don't need your tape measure, you can just use your square. All you do is hook the back edge inside your square here, and it does it right there two inches okay that's your first measurement of two that we need write it down okay two inches outside to outside next measurement we need is this edge to this edge, just the drip lip. And we're not going to measure the entire length of it. We're going to measure it with keeping this side flat and level and measure this as it is on an angle going straight across from this point to that point. This is flat, not like that. Keep it at its angle, it's a 45 degree angle. So I'm just gonna burn a couple inches. I'm gonna start at two inches here, measuring from this outer edge in. And it looks like we got a half inch, okay? Now this is why you measure it with it being on its angle. Because if you flatten it out, it grows to 5 eighths of an inch. And that measurement is going to be wrong. Measure it the way that it's going to sit on the building. Half inch. That's our second measurement. Okay. Using those two measurements, we're going to place them on this area and then cut out what we don't need. So firstly, two inches, easy peasy. Hook your square on the side of your piece of trim right there. And then just make your mark at two inches, okay? Now,
line it up, square through, stand your square up, line it up, square through. Now we're going to measure the second measurement which is going to be this just this strip loop. You want to mark it on top of the drip loop. Just like that. Not down here, but up here. Just line your square up with that part, let the rest stay behind, and hold it with your fingers, just like that. Okay, I'm gonna grab it with my left hand, to the right with my right. Boom, right there, okay. Now what we're going to do is connect this point, this mark we just made at half inch, to where these two lines come together back here, okay. Drawing a straight line back, 45. I prefer to use the flattest side of my square, which is the pointiest end. That way the material stays flat up against the back of the square. So now I'm just going to line the point up with that mark back there. And draw a straight line right across. Line it up back here. Line it up right here. Make a straight line. Okay. Now you're going to do the same thing from your half inch point right down to the corner. Line it up. And send it through. Okay. Now we have a nice 45 going across right there. Okay. Now we don't need any of this to the right side of our 45. Anything to the right side of it. Don't need this. And we don't need any of this. So we're free to cut this line. Cut this line all the way out, and we're good to go on our first piece. So, 
I can't use my reds here because I want my cutoff to come out. And if I use my reds, it's going to push the right hand side down. So get your greens, that way it pushes it up so we can make this bend here. And I'm only going to go in as far as my nose, my nose can go up against that rib. If anything, I want to stay back just a bit and try not to clip all the way through. Just uh, let the back of the blade do the work. Since there's a double hem back there, it's hard not to clip all the way through. I get it, but just do your best not to. I like to grab further back on my grips. That way I can ease in the pressure without having to squeeze so hard. So I'm going to keep that edge up nice and flat here because if you see I roll this way, you can't see. But if I roll this way, you can see. Okay. I just bend that up. And keep cutting. Making sure that when you start your next cut here, you're in the right spot. You don't want to start cutting and go off this way because then you're going to make a little spike there. Stay on your line. Stay in your cut. Okay, if you need to, bend this out of the way more so you can see your cut better. Stay inside the cut. Right up in there. And then slowly grip down until you've got your bite right there, okay? And I like to keep the nose pressed down against the material by picking up the back a little bit, just so I can see where that nose is going. I'm not clipping all the way to the front, and I'm grabbing as much as I can on the next cut. And I'm watching where it's cutting. See, almost to the tip there. Now I'm going to rebite. We don't want to cut to the tip. Come in. Now here, I want to go and shove the nose as tight into there as I can. Just like that. And keep that line. Once you get all the way to the very end there, go ahead and Clip all the way, okay? So now, just cut down this line. Use my reds, so that way I'm pushing the piece I don't want out. See how it picks it up? Picks it up and out. It bends it. Okay. Pushes one down and the other up. Doing the same thing, not cutting to the tips. This cut is not as important, so don't worry about it. But do try to come to a nice point here at the end. You want that to kind of break off just like that. Okay. Next thing, 
need to open this up. Open the hem up as much as you can when you get to the point here. The more you open it up here, you can see it's kind of pinched really tight there. Right on the very edge. The more you can open this up here down here, the nicer your corner is going to come to a nice point. Otherwise, it's only going to come in and meet halfway here. And you're going to have a little bit of off stuff, which you can always come in and clip that off. But why do that later if you can, if you can do it now? I deal with it now. So I don't have my putty buddy with me. So I'm using a razor. Don't do that. Obviously. Use your putty buddy. And you just want to work it in there. And push down as much as you can and wiggle the edge and you want to press against it and roll back on both sides this side and this side so now that opened that up real good okay That's what you want, just a little pocket. And we're gonna need to put another, the other piece of the corner inside of there. And the other one's gonna go underneath. And then wrap around. And that will hold everything tight to the back here. So your first piece is a simple 45. That's it. One cutoff piece, okay? Two inches back here, a half inch up here to nothing. Okay, so that's one side. I already kind of start seeing things come together. Okay, so now set this one off to the side, start on number two. We're gonna keep the same measurements we needed on the first one. That's two inches and half inch. That's total width and the lip width, the drip lip. Okay. Two inches. Two inches out to here from there half inch to here do the same thing with those two measurements mark your two inch and your half inch.
two inch, half inch. Grab your two inch back. And up. Just grab your two inch all the way to your half inch and all the way back, just like before. Okay, and down. just like before. So now, here's where things change. You're gonna make another line here. Okay. And then you're going to go from this line here, your 45, you're gonna go up a half inch. Okay, and go from right here in the middle. Don't go from back here, don't go from over here. Go from right here in the middle of these two points. Okay. Over here as far as you can, do the same thing, half inch. Now, make a straight line out of them. And then you're going to cut this line all the way down to here. Okay, and then this line all the way out. Then you're gonna cut this little triangle out. Next, you just want to kind of make go from this point here and go go back at an angle with this line. Just make a little line like that. Okay. And we're gonna cut. right across the top of this piece here 
and that line you just made. Cut that out. So before we can make this cut, can't really get in here because this tab's in our way. So we're going to make a little cut here on the edge. I like to use the right kind of snips. So if I use my reds and I cut down on that, this leg's going to go down which is the exact direction we want this tab to bend. If I use the greens, it's gonna pick it up and push it the wrong way. Just a little thing that helps make things look a little nicer. Granted, you ain't ever gonna see this, but still. Practice makes a good paycheck. No, just a little snip, not much. That's just gonna help that bend to be made. So we're gonna go ahead and bend that right now. Support as much of the material as you can. See how this is already starting to bend? I need to put a little bit more support up here. And just roll that around, just like that. And you can kind of close it in on itself. That way it'll hug the building nice and tight. You can dress up your, your bend if you want, but this you don't usually need to do anything to. Just bend it like that. Okay. Now we can come in and cut this piece of material out. I'm just cutting right up to the edge. And I don't want to cut with the tips, so I'm just going to bend that out the rest of the way. You can see there's still a little bit of material in there. That right there, since it's not connected to nothing, I can just snip that right off. Because it's just going to fold to the back. So I'm just gonna get that out of there. Coming in the other direction. Just cutting what I need to. my carpet all right now this is a little sharp on this corner I don't like that so I'm just gonna clip that off because that stabs me and I don't like it Okay, so now you're done with this piece. Almost. You can see how this is all going to work out and come together. Okay, so all we got to do is bend this on that line down and back so that way it'll feed in to the corner over there. So you want to get your duck bills, or in my case, pliers, and just line that up. You don't want to... I like to grab right on the edge here and pinch it flat as much as I can, just to tighten that corner up. Just 
and help it go inside the other one. Okay, so now I wanna start right in the middle, not on either edge, just right in the middle. And I'm gonna squeeze and just do one nice smooth bend. Okay, so now most of the material's bent where I want it to. The tip's not quite where I want it, and the back seems pretty good. Um, so I'm just gonna dress that very end up a little bit. Bend it over a little bit more so it's a little bit more even. That looks pretty good, I like that. So, I'm just gonna make sure that what's bent is nice and squished tight where it's on that hem. I'm still coming up with a way to get rid of this material in the back here without taking too much time. But bend it around like that, get it nice and crisp. And then all you're gonna do is put the one that's a straight cut, this one's a straight cut, this one's got the tab on it, tab there and a tab here. These are for pop rivets. So you want to go over with the back tab and then under with the pop rivet tabs, okay, and then in. As you can see, what this does, combination of going over with your tab, under with your tab here, and then tucking inside of here, creates a very strong corner. As you can see, it's not even screwed to the wall. And this thing is already pretty well held together and it's barely even locked in. The back side is giving me trouble, as you can see. That's why I want to remove this tab on the inside, the drip lip, the hem edge there. But you can finagle it and get it in there. It's a little hard doing it this way when you have to see with your fingers, but it's not impossible. So you just wanna Make sure everything is locked in and tight. And then start tapping this side with your soft hammer. And it'll close up your gap here and your gap here. And it'll line up your tip here. And you just gotta keep working that in. Work the tab into the edge there. Once you get it where you like it, go ahead and put your screws in within one inch of the corner. One inch over here, one inch over here, if possible. If not, two inches. But you want to try to screw these two pieces of material together. So, the corner. was fighting me because I didn't have this opened up far enough. So I went ahead and opened it up better. So we'll see if it will go in better now. Over in the back, lock this back corner in, under with the tab, and then in. It's getting a little better there. But now it's just a matter of working it, looking at what needs to be adjusted. It looks like I might be a little long on this leg. So I'm gonna just trim this edge back a little bit. And I can just do that freehand. Don't 
need to be nothing special. I'm just gonna take like an eighth off of its length going from here to here. That way this shortens up a little bit and that should do the trick. Boom. Held in place with screws and pop rivet here or there. Should be good. A little bit of caulking in there. Once you get it the way you like it, come to this side. Squish your hem. I want to tighten that all up so that way it pinches. And then that's that's it. That's a finished corner. Oh.